we welcome you to First Tuesdays, as it says, a conversation and continuing opportunity uh, program that we do, of course, on the first Tuesdays of every month. So um, we'd like to say today, uh, we're going to say thank you to our, our coordinator, Jennifer Fenton, who is, this is her last First Tuesday. She is, move, is leaving us for a new position with the, um, down in Vancouver, B, uh, Vancouver, not BC, but Vancouver, Washington, and we will miss her. And so this is her last day to do First Tuesday's moderation. My name is Carolyn Peterson, and I, Jennifer and I have been co-coordinating this for quite some time now. And so uh, technical support, if you for some reason need help getting your audio um, hearing or something's frozen, you might want to copy down these either email addresses or these phone numbers. So. Um, we will, you know, if you have any problems, these are the guys who can help you um, do it. And then we always like to give a, a nod to our funders. Uh, we work for the Secretary of State. The Washington State Library is part of the Secretary of State, and our particular department is funded by a grant from the state grants of the Institution of Museum and Library Services. And now, having gotten the credits out of the way, we one more thing: the office of our Office of Financial Management asks us to. Um, you know, type your name, and then if you will please type your library organization and where you are from. We have some folks who may be out of state, and that's great. We're happy to see you. Um, but would you just type, uh, you know, what library you're associated with, and um, and if you are what's where you come from, and um, you know where you are in the Susan Trower, and then where you are. So if everyone would, would do that, we'd sure appreciate that. So just tell us where you're coming from, your library, and you don't have to be associated with the library, just kind of where you are. That would be great. OK. This is wonderful. Folks are typing, typing. That's great. And if you have more than one person logged in with you, if you're looking at listening to speakerphones. Thank you. See, this takes a, it takes a, um, a <laughs> it takes a community to remind me of all these things, and I appreciate it. All right. Great. So I see the great majority of people are doing that. Thank you. And here we go. We're going to, I'd like to introduce my uh, speaker today. And Ivy, I forgot to tell you that I will be moderating the chat. And I will either, uh, I will ask, I will interrupt you to say you have a question, or we can, I can collect them for you at the end. How would you like to do that? Uh, we can do them as they come up. That's fine. OK, I will moderate the chat button. And I will, we will just, um, I'll inter gently interrupt you and say that you have a question. I'll do that. So Ivy Noel Weir comes to us from the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where she is a programming and young adult services librarian. And she has enjoyed her work on the importance of pop culture and comic books. And that has earned her spot in the American Library Association's Emerging Leaders Class of 2015. And she loves to travel the country, teaching other librarians how to use deep culture to build safe, accepting, and intersectional library spaces. And she also helps, um, in addition to her library work, Ivy also runs the Valkyries, an online, or helps to run the Valkyries, which is an online group for women who, come, who work in comics, and was one of the writers of the New York's Comic Con's anti-harassment policy. <laughs> she says she doesn't have any hobbies because her hobbies have become her job. And I can get, I can totally understand that. <laughs> Thanks for sharing with us, Ivy. Mean, we really appreciate it. As you can tell, we have uh, a good, close to 20 folks who are here to, to understand what you have to say. Thanks much. And I'll turn the slideshow now over to you. All right. Thanks so much, Carolyn. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, I'm Ivy. I uh, am going to talk to you today about geek culture and diversity, particularly from a collection development standpoint, and then how you can use a diverse and well-curated uh, collection of comic books in your library to create programs uh, that encourage discussions of diversity. So Carolyn covered pretty well who I am. But hi, I'm Ivy, and I'm a giant nerd. Um, <laughs> I've been reading comics since I was about five. Uh, my mom made comics uh, herself. She was a visual artist, and she encouraged me to get involved in the medium. Um, I do help run the Valkyries, which is now about 400 members strong all across the world, uh, women who work 
in uh, comics either as creators or mostly retailers. Um, you can see the picture there of us on a panel at Emerald City Comic Con in Seattle in March. Uh, so up your way. Um, and uh, again, below in Ace Magazine talking about um, how we had partnered with uh, Boom Studios to try and raise awareness about their book Lumberjanes, which is an awesome, uh, all-ages friendly comic. Uh, and then there's me on Hellboy Day uh, <laughs> celebrating Mike Mignola's comic Hellboy by wearing a giant monster hand. Um, so I pretty much came into comics as the primary focus for my librarianship pretty naturally. Uh, it was not even something I had to think about that when I became a young adult librarian, I wanted to get kids reading comics. The reason being that I had always found them to be a really great, uh, escape. Oh, there's someone here from Floating World. I've been there. <laughs> uh, all right. So I'm going to ask you guys a question. And <laughs> feel free to jump in and answer. Uh, what do you think of when you think of comic book heroes? Like, just name for me the first comic book hero that comes into your head. Gambit. <laughs> A deep cut. <laughs> okay. Superman, Spider Man, Spider Man, Black Panther, okay. Batman. So, yeah. Uh, all right. Mass and Tights. About Batman a few times and Spider Man. Um, so, by and large, the first uh, things that we think of are um, mostly white guys, right? White guys in capes. Um, Captain America, Superman, Batman, Spider-Man as well. I should have put him on here. Uh, Largely, yeah, hypermasculine <laughs> pro dudes. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's definitely this very hypermasculine, super macho, white guy uh, hero type of thing. Um, that's who we're told are heroes in a lot of our popular media. I mean, even if you look at Batman. He's kind of a questionable hero and definitely in the 90s became something of an anti-hero, but he's still, you know, a, a rich white guy at the end of the day. Um, and if you think about who is probably making up comic book readership, you know, it's not 100% hyper-masculine bro dudes, to borrow a phrase. So what I look for when I'm building a collection is to look for some heroes that maybe look more like this. Um, I don't know if any of you are familiar with these three titles. Um, I tried to pick one that was sort of adult, one that was more teen oriented, and the one that I find, yeah, Miss Marvel, uh, Kamala Khan, uh, one that's maybe a little more kid oriented. Um, so, yeah. Great. Okay. I see that a lot of you are already familiar. Um, going through them sort of one by one, Chu, uh, and that's Chu, the title of the comic, C-H-E-W, is in eating something. Uh, the protagonist is an Asian American man named Tony Chu who is sebopathic, meaning that whatever he eats, he can see the history and story of. Um, and he does murder investigations. So I will let you guys unpack that for yourselves. <laughs> um, following, we've got Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel. This happened about a year ago. Um, previously, Miss Marvel had been a woman named Carol Danvers, who is now Captain Marvel. Um, and she was replaced by Kamala Khan in continuity, who is a Muslim teenager living in Jersey City. 
um, it's a great book. It's a really fantastic book. It has beautiful art by Adrian Alfona. I really recommend checking it out. Uh, and then lastly, we have Miles Morales. He's the ultimate Spider-Man, so if you're not uh, familiar with the way the Marvel Universe works, and believe me, this is an incredibly uh, <laughs> simplistic explanation of this. Um, there are two, I mean, there are a lot, but there are two big universes in Marvel. Uh, one is the 616, the actual Marvel Universe that is all the guys you know, and then there's the Ultimate Universe, which uh, is sort of just another opportunity for creators to tell stories with these characters without messing with the main continuity. Uh, and Miles Morales is Spider-Man in the Ultimate Universe. Um, although he's crossed over, and I think now he's hanging out with the X-Men. Uh, so, it, it, you know, it gets messy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, spoilers. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so then, if these are what we're looking at in terms of modern comic book heroes, what do comic book readers look like? I think describe for me if somebody says, I walk into a comic book shop and I see who? Let me know. Chat white men, boys, mostly boys, older white men. I did see someone say general population, which is very uh, positive. I don't often hear that. Uh, <laughs> the oh, one. Okay. Big Bang Theory. It's always a matter of time before Big Bang Theory comes up. <laughs> um, I have to tell you that I worked in comic book retail for many years. I started as a teenager, and then I worked at a comic book shop up until last year when I uh, could not make it work alongside um, my library schedule. Uh, and the amount of people who talked to me about the Big Bang Theory was impressive. Um, so, yeah, you know, we know in our brains that all kinds of people read comic books, but I think that the large assumption is that this is who comic book readers are. <laughs> um, is, you know, comic book guy from The Simpsons, worst issue ever. Uh, comic book shops are often kind of scary, I think, for people to come into a lot of the time, especially uh, women or people of color because there's this attitude and I mean it's it's deserved in some cases that uh, there's going to be you know this gatekeeping white man in there who's going to judge them for not knowing everything about an issue not understanding everything about a continuity uh, there's an idea that you're not allowed to be new to comics um, which is become a real topic of discussion in the industry in the past few years because uh, it's changing. Um, looking at demographics, comic book readership is really an even split male and female. Um, these numbers are from sales from Comixology, um, which is a digital comics reading platform. Um, but Everything that I've read about print books, it, they, they hold pretty much the same. Um, it still skews very, very small amount male, but uh, females 17 to 26 are uh, going to be kind of coming up on that. Um, they're the fastest growing demographic for sales. Uh, the other misconception uh, that comes up a lot is that uh, comics are for kids. I recently gave another talk where I was talking about uh, professional ethics um, and sort of 
unintentional self-censorship when it comes to comic books that people tend to have stricter um, ideas for what's okay in a comic versus what's okay in a book. Um, you know, they are okay with Fifty Shades of Grey, but they're not okay with Sex Criminals by Matt Fraction and Chip Zdarsky, which in my mind portrays a much healthier sexual relationship than Fifty Shades of Grey, but it has been taken, uh, not purchased for a lot of uh, libraries because it seems pornographic because it has images. So when I was doing that presentation, I was talking about the fact that there's a book called Saga, which is definitely not for kids in any way, this, this comic book saga. Uh, and it has been uh, challenged most frequently for being inappropriate for age group. Oh, yeah, Saga fans, what's up? <laughs> um, who is reading Saga? Who opens Saga and goes, oh, my God, how could they print this book for children? <laughs> it's not a kid's book. There's a misconception that comics are for kids um, amongst people who aren't familiar with the market, and I think it's pretty important to reinforce that the average reader age is between 18 and 30. Um, there are great comics for kids, but a lot of what is coming out right now, because the average reader is of that age, is not being made all ages friendly. Um, you know, the thing I hear the most in the Valkyries is that they have to tell parents all the time that The Walking Dead is not for children, which I think kind of explains itself in this, this attitude. Um, the other, you know, big misconception, and I actually have several t-shirts that say this on it, uh, is that girls don't read comics. And they, they do. Not only do girls read comics, everyone reads comics with female characters. They're interested in female characters. Seven of Comicsology's titles, uh, top-selling titles in March 2015 were books featuring women. It was Silk, which, yeah, somebody recognized here, uh, who, um, you know, is a female Asian-American uh, hero in the Spider-Man universe. Uh, Thor, who recently uh, became female. Um, in the comics, uh, a woman was deemed uh, worthy to real Mjolnir. Uh, Miss Marvel took up a lot of the list. Miss Marvel is extremely popular. So I think that while it seems like a lot of you are familiar with the comics genre, uh, different genres within it and different aspects of the market, a lot of people when I give this talk at um, library <laughs> conferences are shocked by these numbers. Um, and yeah, Pacific Northwest readership, I think, is kind of a special, like, bubble. I lived in Portland for a while, and it was definitely, like, a lot more accepting of different people coming into comic book shops. Um, the shops out there really had a different vibe. Yeah, high nerd factor. That's a good way to put it. A lot of creators live uh, in Portland, too. So you see a lot of people in, in Portland and Seattle who are a little more accepting. Um, so then, if these are who are reading comics, then who's reading them in your library? Think about your library patronage. Um, who's coming in? I saw some of you answered this already, uh, saying that it was largely teenagers, that you saw a good mix of boys and girls. Um, Okay, so yeah, more teens. Reluctant Readers is a good one. Mine is also mostly teen girls, actually, at the at my library, which I love. I'll talk about more. And yeah, kids' comics go out a lot for us as well. We've grown our section for, for young kids tenfold in the past year because it's just become so much more. I think a lot of that is owed to the fact that DC and Marvel are starting to really market to that age. They want to get them young so that they're buying comics the rest of their life, like the rest of us, just trapped in this endless cycle. <laughs> um,
Okay, so a lot of teenagers. So for my library uh, in the Philly suburbs, we see pretty much the same. Uh, adult white men. We can count manga, yeah. Count manga. I don't have a lot in here about manga, but, but we'll definitely talk about it. Um, although I see manga being pretty popular with almost exclusively teenagers. I don't really see our adult patrons checking it out as much. So I'm just going to give you an example of what my library looks like. It's a very small cut. Uh, here we've got um, in the top corner our video game club, uh, which is for middle school students. Um, we are in an area that is pretty, pretty densely uh, populated with um, Hispanic families. So our video game club has become, you know, a pretty diverse group. It's growing all the time. This picture is from last year. At this point, we have about 35 kids who come regularly. Um, and that's my programming assistant, Dan, in there. He's also a school teacher, so he was able to sort of get out into the schools and, and promote and do some outreach for us, which we were pretty lucky about. But um, that's the top corner. Bottom corner is my high school uh, comic book club, which is entirely girls, uh, completely by accident. I advertised it, I put it out there, and we've got about eight girls that come. Boys are totally welcome, we just haven't had any yet. Um, looking at these two, you know, these are the two groups that are primarily checking out comics from me. We also have a lot of adult readers. Um, which is pretty cool, uh, but they're a lot more self-directed. They don't really need me to come in. They don't ask me questions. Um, a lot of them are already kind of uh, in touch with what's trendy or what they want to read, so I'm going to just talk about these two. Uh, the first thing, talking about the top group, was the importance of Miles Morales for them. Um, he, the one kid, this happened last week, uh, he wanted to read Spider-Man. Yeah, exactly. He wanted to read Spider-Man, and he was shocked that Miles Morales looked like him. Um, he said, I like him because he sort of looks like me, and I didn't think I could be Spider-Man. Which is like, man, you gave me such a good quote for this talk, kid. Um, but he, uh, he was really excited to see himself reflected in that comic. You know, Miles, yeah, he's a reflection of our culture. Uh, Miles is young and he's not a super masculine white guy. He looks a lot more like the kids who are coming in and checking out comics and reading comics with me. Um, We've had to uh, reorder the Ultimate Spider-Man books that feature Miles three times because they do what I like to refer to as self-weeding, which means that they get checked out and never brought back, <laughs> um, which I'm okay with. Personally, uh, you know, if my budget allows for me to reorder it, if a kid really is that attached to this book with Miles Morales, I want them to do what they want with it. I know that they pass them around at school. You know, they get damaged from being read so much. Um, so that, even this very small example of representation for my kids has been hugely important. Uh, for my girls, we read Jillian and Mariko Tamaki's Caldecott Award winner for this year, this one summer, uh, for our book club. Um, it was, it's such a beautiful book. It's incredibly well done. It deserves every bit of praise that it's gotten. And it's this, Burma borrowing. Yes, exactly. Borrowing for an undetermined amount of time. Um, so we read this book. It's a story of female friendship uh, in kind of pre-teen, pre-high school years. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous, very poignant stories about family and friendship and relationships that kind of all happen uh, weaved in together in this narrative about a summer uh, by a lake. 
uh, when we read it, I asked my girls what they thought about it, and they said it made them sad. And I said, well, why did it make you sad? What was sad about it? You know, let's talk about the plot points that were affecting for you. One of the girls said that it made them think about times when they were mean to other girls. Uh, for me, that was a really important point to talk about. Um, you know, a lot of girls that age are sort of struggling with ideas of internalized misogyny, you know, meanness amongst each other, cattiness, and they were able to talk about it openly because we had read this book and we had talked about the complications that arise between women who, who develop relationships or the way we view other women. So it was really very important for them. I give these two examples because I think they're really strong indicators of why we need to diversify comic collections. Um, a lot of comics, I know before I took over our ordering um, for graphic novels, our comics section was Green Lantern, Superman, uh, Batman, some Justice League, almost no Marvel comics because the person who ordered before me it was a DC fan. Um, but even then, it was like Spider-Man, Captain America, Hulk, you know, <laughs> the people who, uh, you know, you see on t-shirts at the Target, uh, your, your big canon pantheon for the big two. Um, so when I took over, I was already reading, you know, a pretty diverse array of comics. Um, just because I had been reading them my whole life, and I came from an art school background where, you know, a lot of small press and independent comics were being passed around. Um, so what I tell other people who maybe didn't come from a background where they knew about comics but want to have more than just your main white guys, Pantheon, DC Marvel characters, is that this is a good list of resources, and I actually have this in a handout at the end. Um, always be aware of the Eisner Awards. Um, they happen once a year. They are the comic book industry's Oscars, more or less. Um, it's usually a good indicator of books that are doing something right. Um, yeah, thanks, Jeremy. <laughs> um, so, the Eisner's are pretty handy. Um, the past few years have been pretty, like, Hawkeye by Matt Fraction and David Aha and Saga uh, cleaned up many years in a row. Um, but it's, it's a good way to get familiar with what's trendy because a lot of the Eisner's are books that are selling very well in comic shops. It's also um, a lot of the time uh, independent books. Um, they also have a category for foreign press, which is how I found out about Black Sad. I don't know if any of you have read Black Sad. It's an amazing book. It's uh, a French detective novel. Um, and I, uh, I have used that to get some adult readers who aren't interested in comics interested in comics because it's just great noir. Um, as we talked about before, remember comics aren't just for kids. Take a look at what's being offered beyond stuff that's all ages friendly. Uh, I'm going to type it in the chat for you. Black Dead. Um, trends are interesting. So here's where I talk about Tumblr, <laughs> um, which is always weird when I am giving like a professional talk and I'm talking about Tumblr, but. Um, Tumblr is a really good resource. Fun Home is great. Fun Home at this point, I think, has sort of transcended, sorry, I'm off topic. I saw something in the chat I wanted to make sure I answered. Um, it's sort of transcended past just being a graphic novel. It had a musical adaptation. Um, it's one of those books that I like to say I can trick people with because uh, adult readers who don't read comics and they would never check out a comic. Uh, good joke. Uh, um, 
will read Fun Home because it's gotten so much positive press, like in the New York Times and stuff. Um, it's a great book. I have anything by Alton Bechdel, I would recommend, um, especially as someone who identifies as queer. They've been incredibly important for me, but um, it's uh, it's one of those things that I don't really have to to think too hard about, I guess. Um, but it does go along with thinking beyond Kate books. Um, Kate books are sort of a cutesy name for superhero books because superheroes wear capes. Yeah, you get it. <laughs> um, this is where you start to look into independent books, um, and this is where I, I talk about Tumblr. Uh, I'd say Tumblr is a great and terrible resource. Tumblr is, I find Tumblr to be kind of problematic from, for my teen readers because they encounter a lot of comics media without context, um, usually kind of cloaked in the uh, veil of outrage, so they don't get to have their own opinion on something. But Tumblr is also a really great way to find out what people are talking about in the world of comics. The comics tag on Tumblr is really, you know, that's where you're going to find out what people are talking about, um, what people are interested in, what's creating conversation. Um, you just have to wade through a lot of questionable stuff to get to it sometimes. Um, Previews, somebody had typed Previews World in there. Previews is the catalog that comic book shops use to order, simply put. Um, Diamond comic distributors have the monopoly on comic book distribution. Um, basically, every shop in the country has to go through Diamond to get comics. Um, Diamond puts out this <laughs> huge book every month of everything that's coming out, pop culture, comics, DVDs, books, toys, you know, collectibles, t-shirts, all of that. Um, right, LCS, we will get to, uh, LCS means local comic book shop, um, but we'll get to that on the next slide because I think that they're a pretty important resource too. Um, if you can get your hands on previews, which we'll talk about when we talk about a uh, local comic book shops, then um, do so. It's a good way to see what's coming up. However, it's pretty strongly focused on single issue comics, which aren't usually viable for libraries to have. Um, you can see what trades are coming out too, but it's, it's more to be aware of trends. Um, and Comicsology as well. Um, if you log on Comicsology, they put out a nice clean list of everything that's coming out. Um, Diamond does have a uh, librarian resource called Diamond Bookshelf. They push it really, really hard at like ALA events and uh, like New York Comic Con's library, librarian panels. They really push Diamond Bookshelf. Um, I find Diamond Bookshelf to be more handy if you don't know about comics. Uh, it's very like basic uh, comic book collection knowledge. And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't really utilize Diamond Bookshelf that much. I know people who do, who it really works for. Um, and they'll send you, you know, a newsletter. I think it's monthly uh, with what's coming out and what you should have. The thing to be aware of with Diamond Bookshelf is that they are a comics distributor. And so a lot of the time it is based on who's paying them to mention things. Um, so, yeah, you're better off. I see some people in the chat putting out links to sites. Newsarama is great. Uh, Comics Beat is also pretty wonderful. Um, Heidi is really cool. Um, you can definitely find news about what's coming out online. Um, I also, uh, though they're not quite as good as they used to be, the Mary Sue does touch on a few things that I think are, are important when you're going to have these discussions. Um, there's a bunch of comics. Uh, comics Alliance is one of my favorites. They're pretty devoted to um, discussions of diversity and uh, pushing comics forward. Um, 
picture here also is The Shadow Hero by Jean Luen Yang and Sunny Liu, which we did for our teen and for our middle grade comic book club, which was hugely popular. It's a great book. It's beautiful. It's a really classic superhero tale. Getting to know your LCS uh, is an important step in this process. Um, your local comic shop. The staff is probably actually, I could tell you resources all day, but if you have a good comic book shop that you can go and work with, the staff is going to be your best resource because they can tell you what people are reading, they can tell you what's selling, they can help you figure out release schedules for things, they can point you in the direction of books that are, you know, uh, simulating discussion in the shop or amongst their staff. Um, I was comic book shop staff, like I said, for many years, and uh, prior to uh, working in libraries, was, was helping be this resource for librarians. Um, it's a really good way to stay up on trends. Um, an important collaboration you can have with your LCS is Free Comic Book Day. Um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Free Comic Book Day. Anybody? Yeah, it's, it's awesome. For kids, it's amazing. Um, I always tell people every year on Twitter, I'm like, I know that Free Comic Book Day is great for you, but imagine how good it is for little kids. <laughs> it's amazing for them. Um, it's also one of the uh, days when I think all ages friendliness is really encouraged and what the publishers are putting out. Um, when the rest of the year it might be a little more lean for kids, unfortunately. Um, Diamond in recent years has been really pushing for libraries to do free comic book day. The reason for this, if I can put on my cynical hat for a minute, is that shops have to buy all the books for free comic book day. Uh, it's not free for shops in any way, shape, or form. Um, and so if shops are partnering with libraries, they are ordering twice as many free comic book day books. Um, cynicism aside, it, it's great. It's a great event to have at your library. Um, you can even find, if you don't have, I saw someone who said that you don't have an LCS near you, if you find one that is willing to mail them to you, they'll do that. I know people who have done that. Um, people who are more in rural libraries who don't have a comic shop near them will have the, the books mailed out. Um, there's a few ways you can, you can partner long distance with shops. Um, so we've done free comic book day the past two years uh, in association with a shop where I used to work. Um, they would give us the books, we would hand them out. Usually the shops, you know, you can you pay them for the books and then they'll want you to hand out, you know, like a flyer for their shop. Um, Free Comic Book Day is always the first. No, Diamond will not provide free comics libraries. Um, they will encourage you to partner with a shop, a brick and mortar shop, and yeah, you will purchase them, yeah, through the shop. <laughs> um, it's so they can sell more books. But you know, it's still it's still a good event for libraries, I think. Um, this is also a good opportunity if you're not going to have a free comic book day event at your library to um, see if any leftover books from your local comic book shop they'd be willing to donate. And then I've used those as prizes for summer reading and stuff like that. Um, it's a good opportunity to kind of get in at, at a partnership level with your local shop. Um, I have recently been really trying to get single issue comics into my library through the programs we're doing um, for kids and teens, uh, where I will bring them. Uh, most recently, we did uh, the first issue of Unbeatable Squirrel Girl, which is a, a new Marvel title. And I'll bring them issues, and they'll read them, and then we'll have a discussion. Um, or for adults, single issue comic swaps are pretty popular. Uh, where you encourage people to bring in what they have at home and they uh, swap with other people. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a really good way to get it in. Single issue comics are really difficult for libraries to have because they just tend to self-destruct after a while. They don't circulate very well and, you know, they get damaged. 
So um, it's kind of a nice thing to have if you're okay with giving it away. Um, I know that they're working on a digital comics platform for libraries similar to Overdrive, but I haven't seen any real movement on that in a while. So I'm going to talk about what, if you were to go to a comic book shop, might be recommended for you by the staff there. Um, yeah, for your free reading. I talked about Chew. Um, I think Chew's great. I think that it's a really easy book to get people who are cautious about comics to read because it's so ridiculous that once they start, they kind of want to keep going. Um, Rat Queens uh, is quickly becoming one of the most popular comics um, that I see selling in shops. Um, four female characters. Uh, it's basically playing Dungeons and Dragons with like the most foul mouthed group of like totally butt kicking women. Uh, not for children in any way, but uh, has become pretty popular with adult patrons who like grew up reading fantasy or grew up playing D&D. &D. Um, it's a great book. I, I love Rat Queens. Um, Saga, there are already some readers here, it seems like. Um, Somebody once described Saga to me as hipster Star Wars on drugs, <laughs> uh, which is not inaccurate. Um, it's a really great story, and it's another book that really crosses um, comic book fans and, and non-comic readers. Um, it's received so much positive press that people who don't read comics will come pick it up. It, it is so good. It is it is so ridiculously good. Uh, Brian K. Vaughn, who wrote Saga, has another series that he did before called Why the Last Man, which is pretty much my favorite comic of all time, um, which I recommend to a lot of adult patrons who are interested in science fiction. Older teens are kind of a difficult um, a difficult thing to call. Um, Young Avengers in March, I don't feel any qualms giving to, to older uh, teenagers. Um, March is an incredibly important book. Um, we just did the second one in our book club. I say it's for older teens here, but we actually used it for our middle grade book club, and they did just fine with it. Um, it's, you know, a really well-executed story of civil rights that really promoted some interesting discussions amongst our kids, um, and a lot of them ended up reading the book with their parents um, because their parents were interested in it. Um, we had one family who ended up buying copies, and all of them read it together and, and had a lot of really cool discussions uh, about civil rights. So I really recommend March. Um, Young Avengers is, um, if you've got older teens that like Kate books, Young Avengers is great. Um, it is a team of, uh, exactly what it sounds like, Avengers, younger, uh, late teens, early 20s, and it's a really diverse team. You have, uh, LGBTQ characters, uh, Miss America Chavez is pretty much, like, my favorite character ever. <laughs> um, she's amazing. Um, she's, she's awesome. It's a really great book to get kids who are interested in superheroes reading something a little more substantive than just punching. Um, it deals with a lot of issues that I think really ring true with, with teenagers, um, you know, in terms of gender and sexuality and uh, growing up and relationships, plus superhero punching. So I love to give kids young Avengers. Um, similarly, Runaways, if you're looking for something that's good for a little bit younger. Wicked and Divine is one of those books that I said to, I, I have a friend who works at Fantastic Comics in Berkeley, and we were talking about Wicked and Divine, and I said, it's not a book I would give kids, but it's a book I would leave out for them to find. <laughs> um, it's, you know, a little more mature than the other two. It's the same creative team as Young Avengers, actually, uh, Karen Gillan and Jamie McKelvey. Um, it's a little more mature. Uh, but I think that kids could be really interested in it, especially if they're interested in mythology, the plot of Wicked and Divine being that the gods are uh, reborn as 
like teen pop stars, uh, but they only live for three years. Um, it's a really, really well done book, and I, I would recommend it for adults as much as teens. Younger teens, um, we're going to talk about Miss Marvel and The Shadow Hero. Uh, both are great. Yeah, uh, mythology is really trendy right now, which, I mean, I'm super into. Um, Wiktiv is definitely more mature. Uh, Thor might be a better fit or Journey into Mystery um, for mythology fans. Um, it, it's huge for us, too, the everything mythology. We're doing a lot of mythology stuff this summer. Um, we just did I Killed Giants by Joe Kelly in my teen book club, which deals with some mythological aspects. And then it inspired a lot of the kids to read Joseph Campbell. Um, so now they're all talking about the hero's journey all the time, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> um, Ms. Marvel and the Shadow Hero we talked about, they're great. They're, it's just something where you don't even have to think about recommending them, which I love. Gotham Academy, the first trade is going to come out this month. I love Gotham Academy. Um, I love Gotham Academy. It's basically, if you've got manga fans in your library, Gotham Academy is fantastic. Um, it's sort of Batman plus a detective story plus, like, shoujo manga romance. It's, it's a great book. Um, we're doing that for our book group this month. Um, I do want to talk about manga very briefly. I can't speak 100% about manga um, because I don't know as much about it as I do Western comics. Uh, let me type that out for you. The current Thor is what I mean when I say this. Journey into Mystery is another really good one. Uh, and I Killed Giants. Um, also, Lumberjanes actually has a, a decent amount of mythological stuff, and that's for, for youngest readers, probably. Um... So manga, yeah, I, I can't speak to it as much. The biggest thing that I would say is if you're doing collection development for manga, I'm going to give you a list of resources at the end. Um, just do your research on it. Um, I think a lot of the American book distributors don't necessarily understand certain, certain manga, and so you will be being marketed things for young teens that are probably not appropriate at all. <laughs> um, there are definitely some titles that my kids really love. They love Azumanga Daio, uh, which I'll type out, because uh, I know that's a tough one. Um, Azumanga Daio is pretty popular. Uh, they love Sailor Moon because of the, um, the new series. Uh, I Killed Giants, I would say, is probably middle grade and up. Um, I don't think a younger kid would have a problem with it. It's just, it can be, it's a little bit scary, but mostly it's reading level, I would say. Um, middle grade and older. Right. So we've talked about some titles. Um, so then how do I use these? I've talked a little bit about it. Um, reading groups. We have reading groups for every age level. We're about to start one for adults, um, just due to popular demand. Uh, we have comic book clubs that go from youngest readers who are reading, you know, the very easy Tiny Titans books, um, all the way up to 18-year-olds who are reading, uh, along with me, some of the harder titles. So reading groups have been really popular for us. The way that I've structured them differently is that we don't just read the book and discuss it. We usually have another interactive element. And this is where I talk about Twitter. Um, Twitter, like Tumblr, is great and also the worst. Um, the way that it can be great for librarians is that comic book creators are very accessible through Twitter. A lot of them are. Um, and they will work with you. Um, so here's a story about our reading group. Um, my, we do a comic book convention at my library every year. It's called Instacon, and it's entirely planned by my teen, uh, group. 
my team volunteers. Um, last year, I brought about 500 people in. We had uh, Kate Less, who's a cartoonist, come as our guest. Um, it was really successful. This year, when I asked my kids who they wanted to have come, they said they wanted Kelly Sue DeConnick, who writes Captain Marvel. Um, luckily, I, I know Kelly Sue vaguely um, because of the Valkyries, so I was able to reach out to her um, and ask, you know, uh, hey, would you want to come do this thing? We would pay for your flight in your hotel, but, you know, you're my kid's dream guest. Well, she couldn't make it, um, but she uh, did send each of my kids a personalized Captain Marvel uh, in the mail. She, she sent us a package where she wrote you know, a little note to each one of the girls on my committee uh, and gave them an issue of Captain Marvel, which is incredible. This is the kind of thing that comic book creators are often really willing to do for libraries. Um, if we're picking up steam to a point where because I've reached out to so many of them on Twitter and developed good relationships with publishers, also through Twitter, uh, we have Skype sessions with creators scheduled all through the summer. Um, we'll be talking to Joe Kelly about I Kill Giants. We'll be talking to Kelly Sue um, about Captain Marvel. Um, through reaching out to Oni Press and uh, Boom Studios, yeah, Skype is a fantastic way to do this. So many comic creators are willing to Skype in and talk about these things with your library patrons. Um, if you create these connections through Twitter, uh, it's really easy to get people excited about what you're doing. Creators want their books in libraries um, because they're getting read. They're getting read by people who don't necessarily feel comfortable or have the means to go into comic book stores. Um, so I really recommend reaching out to creators online. So many of them are so friendly and so willing to talk to you. Or if you go to a Comic-Con, if you go up to a table, I, this has happened to me a million times, I'll go up to a table, I'll be talking to somebody, I'll say, you know, I'm a librarian, you know, I, I want to get your books in my shop or in my library. They'll usually give you books <laughs> um, to, to put into your system. Um, if you're not comfortable uh, kind of coming up with these sorts of discussions, uh, the Conflict Legal Defense Fund, or CBLDF, I'm going to type it out. Uh, they're a really good resource. They have teaching guides that actually even touch on common core standards uh, that are in, in popular comics. Um, the other important thing that they do, as their name suggests, is that they uh, help if you have bans or challenges happening in your library um, related to, to graphic novels. It's a really good resource. I recommend getting involved with the CBLDF. Uh, I recommend joining. Um, Goodreads sometimes will have discussion questions for, for comics, or if you just Google, like, I Kill Giants discussion questions. You'll, you'll find um, a lot of comic book store pages have discussion questions. Um, so while we do things like Comic Cons and cosplay and trivia events because we've built up this uh, discussion around our graphic novel collection, starting out really simply with a reading group with, you know, intriguing questions from the CBLDF, that's a great way to do it. Basically, to kind of wrap up to make sure I have time to take any questions you might have, comics are for everybody. Um, this was a movement that was started by some editors a few years ago. Uh, it's funny because now that I'm looking at it, I realize I've met like a lot of the people in these photos now. Um, people are feeling more and more able to kind of own their geekery these days. And libraries are in a really great uh, position because you get to be this true neutral in the comic book world. Um, there's no gatekeeping at a library. I mean, we are, by the ALA Codes of Ethics, not allowed to be gatekeepers. So you're able to provide people with this very safe, inclusive space. Um, and then I feel like our job is then to follow that up with 
having collections that reflect our patronage, um, doing the research into books that are diverse, that feature different identities uh, as protagonists. You know, if comics are for everybody, then we should really be promoting that message the same way that we promote information being for everybody. Um, I'll let you guys ask questions if you have any. Stay in touch with me. Uh, I'm on Twitter, like, way too much. But that's how I get people to Skype with my kids. So there you go. <laughs> um, you can always email me. Uh, I'm going to upload a little handout that has these resources and a few more. Um, no Flying, No Tights, which I didn't actually touch on, is a really great resource. Um, it is only books that aren't Kate's books. They do review a lot of manga. Um, I think it's actually run by librarians. Uh, it's it's great. Let me find my handout. It should come up as a um, It's loading, loading. Ah, mine just showed up. Mine just showed up. Loading. All right. There you go. <laughs> All right, uh, does anybody have any questions or anything I can touch on? Anything I missed that you were hoping I would cover? Um, and I'm just going to say thank you because I know lots of folks have to, uh, you know, get on the desk at, as the hour changes. So if you need to go, um, yeah. you know, we understand. So, um, but if not, please either use your headset to click on the talk button or go ahead and type. Uh, type your questions into chat. And here's one. It says, where would you go? Where would you have someone start if they want to get into comics or, or graphic novels? Um, I think that that is a question, you know, there's no one-size-fits-all answer. What I like to ask people uh, is not what do you like to read, but what do you like to do? Um, you know, I say, what do you like to do? And if they say, you know, well, I like gaming, I might say, okay, well, try In Real Life by Cory Doctorow. Um, if they say, I like watching movies or I, I like westerns, as they try Pretty Deadly. Um, it's sort of a thing where you, you have to do a little bit of a reference interview. Um, I think there are a few books that are just, like, good. Uh, if somebody wants to get into comics, I usually am like, there's like the, uh, like holy trinity of like Lumberjanes for younger people, Hawkeye for everybody, and Saga for adults. Um, you know, they're just solidly good books. I don't know if that is helpful. Um, I have a question. I mean, if you're going to start, that's only you know, three titles, and if you wanted to get like a, you know, more, is that there isn't anything yet like the uh, children's catalog out there. This is a total newbie. I don't think so. Question. <laughs> right, not yet. Okay, so in other words, you, you just start with those three titles, which yes. are continuing titles. Those are our continuing titles. Okay. If you're starting to build a collection, I would say do make sure that you have you know, even though I spent the whole first part of this talk being like, don't just buy white guys. Like, make sure you do have this, the staples, you know, X-Men, Batman. Um, there are definitely titles that are better within those to get people interested. Like, All-Star Superman by Grant Morrison. That's an older book, but it's great. It's a really good way to get people into Superman. Yeah, it's and then he. Oh, so yeah, I approach it the same it. way coming in as someone looking for a book suggestion. You know, I mean, I, as I say to my coworkers occasionally, these are just books, you guys. <laughs> uh, you know, they're they're the same as any other book. Uh, it's going to be what people are interested in, what their reading level is, what they're comfortable with. Okay. Can I just what? I just wanted to point out that uh, someone recommended Jill Lepore's Okay, Wonder this is about Woman. comics. Um, I think it's interesting. People will check those out, but normally for me, it's people that are already comic fans. Except for that book you mentioned. That Wonder Wo History of Wonder Woman has got, like, gone out ten times over since we got it, which is 
great. I want to see people talking about Wonder Woman. Um, the History of Marvel Comics by Sean Howe is another really good one. Okay. Any other questions? Or I see Richard is typing, typing as is um, some other folks. So we'll see what they're saying. All right. Did you see yeah. Richard's comment in chat? If you're not familiar with comics, how you buy your outfit? Uh, if you're not near a local comic shop, because my first suggestion would be go, go to a shop, um, familiarize yourself with those those websites. I put some in that handout. Other people had recommended some like Newsarama and Comics Alliance. Um, those are really good resources. Um, it's a good way to get a feel for what people are talking about because I think there's this idea that if you get into comics, you have to like, go all the way back to the start and you've got to like know every single element from the beginning. But I think if you're just taking time to look into uh, what's out there right now, what the discussion currently is, then that's, that's the best way to broaden your knowledge base. Okay, one more person is typing. Actually, a couple people are typing, so we'll see some things come through. It just takes a little while for uh, people typing to come across the <laughs> airwaves or the lines, I guess I should say. And if someone has a headset and they want to just click on the talk button, they could get that. Uh, okay, we have a thank you yeah, from fun. Richard. And we're coming through some other things. Let's see. And then the other thing is this going this will be up on archive um, so that we maintain we actually have seven years of back um, archives on a variety of pro topics to that are aimed at a variety of our librarians in Washington State and other states. So if you want to explore other um, topics of interest, you can go to our back our back archive. Okay. <laughs> there, and then we had a very, very good, she said, I think, um, Edward says, I think it's worth considering that people still read comic strips in the newspaper or online. So when you say I don't read comics, you could remind them. Yeah, exactly. Visual storytelling so, is, yeah. is everywhere. I think that we're moving past the stigma of like comics are for nerds in a lot of ways to where a lot of that's becoming more integrated. Which makes me happy. I am not attending SDCC. Uh, I will be at New York Comic Con, um, but I will not be at San Diego because that, that is one gauntlet I don't feel like entering into. <laughs> okay. Well, any other questions? Any other questions or, or topics? I don't see anybody um, else typing. Thank so you guys. I'll say thank you. And uh, we really appreciate okay. it, and I learned lots. Thank you, thank you. It was, so it was really you. nice. Again, feel free to email me or tweet at me if you have any questions later that you think of. And like I said, Jeremy will have this up on our website probably by noon today, Pacific Daylight Time. All right, thank well, you. Thanks again. <laughs>